Spoilers! If you haven't seen the first episode of Prehistoric Planet and care about being spoiled about the inclusion of some critters, stay away from this video till you've seen it. This video was made by using my own knowledge, scientific papers, as well as the words of the people involved with the show itself. This is in no way meant to provide undue criticism towards the hard work that went into the show. In fact, there are very little instances where it may come off as me saying that something is wrong. As I am not an expert on every single group of animals, living or extinct, I used the words of other experts that may know the given organism better than I. Many criticisms are merely nitpicking and do not affect the quality of the overall show, and many are also debatable. I used the words provided by lead paleontological consultant Dr. Darren Nash via his Twitter threads discussing the designs and design philosophy of all the animals in Prehistoric Planet to construct a more fleshed out scientific discussion than the show provides. Obviously, the show is meant to be more visual and myth-breaking or trope-busting than purely informational or educational. It does deliver a good amount of scientific information, but only that which is absolutely needed in the context of the scene or episode. I think a lot of people wanted more thorough explanations of why some animals were reconstructed the way they were, especially considering how strongly updated they are with speculative but scientifically rooted displays, behaviors, and tissues because of the stranglehold the 80s and 90s nostalgia-fueled outdated reconstructions have on most dinosaur-related media. So, please take all this into consideration when watching my scientific reviews of Prehistoric Planet. I was not aware of any information that may come out after the writing, recording, editing, or publication of these videos that may counter any issues I bring up with the dinosaurs of Prehistoric Planet. As of the writing of this preamble, no full-length documentaries or discussion of the behind-the-scenes work on the series has come out. Some rather short tidbits on the location filming, philosophy, and computer animation work have been released, but this does not entail the full breadth of the project. Alcyone Design in the pterosaur nesting colony sequence, we see many species and different growth stages of pterosaurs. The Alcyone shows up primarily in the form of twitchy precocial flaplings, trying to make it from their rocky ocean nesting platforms to the safety of a nearby coastal forest. The adult form shows up in the backgrounds of a few scenes. The remains of Alcyone, as well as the rest of the pterosaurs in this sequence, were dug up in a single dig site over a three-year period, which unearthed about 200 pterosaur specimens. The good bit with Alcyone is that it is known from a handful of specimens. The problem is that these specimens are rather fragmentary. Only the lower jaw is known of the animal, as well as various pieces from the shoulder girdle, the wings, the sternum, and bits of the legs. Not quite enough to give a good idea of what an adult, or even a hatchling, would look like. Why, one might ask, would the team decide to use these pterosaurs if their fossil record is so shoddy? The dig site from which they came indicates something ecologically extraordinary. A nesting colony the prehistoric planet team evidently wanted to show such a congregation of flying reptiles more than they cared about reconstructing a perfectly accurate Alcyone, which, as far as I see it, is semi-impossible as of right now. This does not mean their reconstruction of it is completely being pulled out of thin air, nor does it mean the sequence loses any scientific rigor. Alcyone was found to belong to the Nyctosauridae family by doctors Nicholas Longrich, David Martil, and Brian Andres in 2018. This is a group of rather seabird-like pterosaurs that stayed relatively small, tended towards huge head crests, and lost all of the fingers of the hand besides the single major wing finger. As you'll see, there are other Nyctosaurs living with Alcyone that need some patching up. We see the young hatch and leave their seaweed nests to climb up to the top of the ocean rock platforms to begin their journey. They are based on the known young of close relatives, as well as just general pterosaur hatchling anatomy. Nothing much to say here since most pterosaur hatchlings were pretty generic looking. 
The adult Alcyone are never shown in great detail, but you can pick them out from the background in a few scenes. They are the ones with blue crestless heads and light grey bodies. They look appropriately nictosaurid in anatomy and match what little is known of Alcyone rather well. Behavior the Alcyone behavior of leaving the eggs in seaweed nests to hatch on their own and find their way to safety, a la turtles, is not pulled from nowhere, though it is applied to a genus of pterosaur whose nesting behavior is unknown. A 2021 paper by Dr. Naish, Dr. Mark Witten, and Dr. Liz Martin Silverstone found that some pterosaurs were born fully capable of powered flight. This indicates that at least some pterosaurs left their eggs to hatch and fend for themselves. The Prehistoric Planet team made sure to show different styles of parental care among pterosaurs in this scene to show the general audience that the pterosaurs were extremely diverse, diverse enough for different groups to employ different parental behaviors. The science used for this show is groundbreaking. The speculative nature of a lot of the stuff shown is equal parts necessary and representative of the real world. Two of the main consultants, Drs. Mark Witten and Darren Nash, helped to bring forth the modern dinosaur renaissance with their little paperback landmark book, All Yesterdays. I've made a two-part series of their work here on Edge that you can view to get a really good idea of the kinds of visions that team was trying to convey. With their work, they were not trying to say that speculation should be taken as gospel or that those who cautioned conservativeness in reconstructing long-dead animals are wrong. Instead, their intention was to show the world that the animals of the past are as the animals of today, gross, complex, and alive. The world around us has only been around us for 1 to 2 million years. Before us, the modern paradigm has been around for 66 million years. Before that, there was an unfathomable expanse of time, 184 million years of time. If I wanted to really scramble your brain, there is an even more unfathomable expanse of time before that, but we're talking dinosaurs right now. For as alien as certain parts of the Mesozoic era may seem, the laws of nature retained their stranglehold. Animals of the Mesozoic had a much longer period of time to get gross and complex, so to think so narrowly as to only reconstruct the animals of the past as closely as their bones can say is to completely ignore everything we know about life. In fact, because of the much longer period of time that the dinosaurs had, it is nearly mathematically impossible to think they didn't get into weirder stuff than we see today. This seems to have been the driving force behind Prehistoric Planet, at least with the consultants and animators. I mean, we all know Favreau just wanted them to act like animals and look pretty. No shame or shade there. So what did you think of Prehistoric Planet? This video is way too hefty to only now get into the music, cinematography, and directing, or my criticisms therein. I have just gone through every single aspect regarding the science behind this show based on the very sparse information we have right now. Darren's tweets and the uncovered segments can only tell us so much. I think I can speak for everyone that we are eagerly awaiting a behind-the-scenes documentary on the documentary. In the meantime, we can only imagine. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, hit the bell icon for updates, like this video, and drop a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my elephant tier patrons, Ray, Isaiah Garza, Dinosaur, Christoph Hubinger, Biotiverse, and Arda Bayer. And another thanks to my Tyrannosaurus tier patrons, The Dogman, Iron Bladesman, Danny Van Heck, and Dana Manchester.